Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar on the Australian Data Partnerships Program. I'm Catherine Brady and I'm from the Australian Research Data Commons and Adrian Burton and I will be providing you with an overview of this program and we're going to provide you with an opportunity to ask any questions you might have um, at the end of that overview in the second part of our webinar. Uh, if you could add your questions to the question pod um, in GoToWebinar as you uh, think of them and as we're talking, that's fine, just pop them in there um, and we'll get to them at the end of our presentation. Um, you are muted during the webinar and uh, we will be recording this also. Okay, I'll hand over now to Adrian Burton, uh, our Director of Data and Services. Hi everyone. This is the Australian Data Partnerships, which is uh, an initiative within the Australian Research Data Commons. The Australian Research Data Commons is part of the NCRIS program, which is the National Collaborative Research Infrastructure Strategy. And we are a program that focuses in on uh, building an Australian Research Data Commons. You can see there we have a number of programs in that area. We deal with a very holistic and system-wide approach to um, the use of data in research. We go all the way from national policy, people, culture, through uh, software and platforms. Uh, we have an important coordination role with, within the, the sector around data. We also provide some storage and uh, compute infrastructure ourselves, as well as um, the development of data and the provision of services. So very wide uh, area of activity. Uh, that this particular uh, activity is within our national data assets uh, program. Again, within NCRIS, because we're doing this within the within the framework of the National Research Infrastructure Roadmap. Uh, what we're trying to do here is build up these nationally significant assets uh, to support leading edge research, which is one of the, the uh, defining characteristics of the national research infrastructure. What does that mean? You know, uh, what is an, you know, a national data asset in, in this infrastructure kind of uh, context? We're really, the program that we're talking about today is an, a co-investment initiative of the ARDC uh, to build really uh, on the premise that data is part of the national research infrastructure, or it can be part of the national research infrastructure. The premises on which this program is based is, uh, first of all, that there is some data. Now, we're not too fussy about where the data comes from. It's data for research, so this could be from research. It could equally be from government, business, or you know, other sources. Um, should be national. Uh, this is one of the premises behind this program is that uh, we are talking about a data asset that is generated and consumed and governed by multiple organizations. So the NCRIS program is a national research infrastructure program. So we are dealing with data that requires multiple organizations to be, to be involved. As far as research is concerned, it's a, the, the NCRIS program really is to um, support leading edge research. So we, we are looking for those kinds of assets that, that can be you know, applied to research. So it's not just collecting data for data's sake, but it's collecting data for research sake. And there are a number of number. This is an exciting time in research uh, where the information and innovation agendas are really pushing new ways of doing research and data is one of those things that can help that. It's also an infrastructure program, so you should keep that in mind when you're um, thinking about partnering with the ARDC. Uh, we are an infrastructure program and, and so the data that you're developing um, 
we, we are really looking to partner with people who are, can make the data available in, in, in the same way, you know, think of infrastructure like a, a road or a port, anyone can come and use this infrastructure for productive um, other research reasons. So really, we are looking to almost expand the, uh, the national infrastructure uh, offerings in data by um, co-investing and, and partnering with a whole set of people to build up new assets that can be part of this infrastructure. They can be used by a wide range of different researchers and even non-research. So that's the, the, the really the basic tenets behind this program is that you, data can be part of the national research infrastructure and these are the kind of kinds of um, criteria but characteristics of some of data that can be part of the national research infrastructure. If you look across the, the ecosystem, right at the bottom there, there is a lot of data that is comes from or is related to the, pro, the normal project and operations of research institutions or government agencies. And we are very supportive of that. This program is not necessarily just about those, about that operational or project level data. This is the, about the data that pushes up to be part of community and national reference collections. And that's the part where ARDC really thinks that we can uh, provide a difference now. And it's the only uh, level at which uh, NCRIS can operate. The, these are the, um, the national pieces of infrastructure. Uh, we there is a lot of data that happens at that project and operational stage and obviously you know you look to your own institution or your own government department for the normal uh, management of, of that data but it's where where they start to be pulled up to the community or national co collections that um, the ARDC is willing to be part of that partnership. Now it's not quite so black and white though because these reference collections actually are sustained and, and maintained by uh, research institutions and government agencies etc so um, that's partly why uh, we think it's a good role for ARDC is to complement those institutional resources for something which goes well beyond the institutional boundary. So the current program that we're talking to you about today is called the Australian Data Partnerships Program. And we're really focusing here on those partnerships, the national scale partnerships. Um, so catalyzing them, developing them, helping them to scale up so that we can then have national scale data and that national scale, scale data can give an advantage to our researchers. Now, it's these partnerships again that, that we really, where we really think that ARDC as, an, as a national research infrastructure program can partner with a whole set of stakeholders. In one sense, ARDC can be you know, the glue or, or, or part of the cement or part of the catalyst to, to, to bring this or to solidify, to develop these national um, data assets. The resourcing of these assets, we, we acknowledge that you know it's it's well beyond the scope of a of a single organisation, and just the friction, not the friction, the flagfall of of bringing together a number of partners means that resourcing these things are not that easy, and we think it's a really great um, role that ARDC can play as to um, help to uh, scale up or or step up these uh, national data assets or even uh, helping um, scaling up the governance and, and, and buy in from the community into them. So that's why it's called partnerships, the Australian data partnerships, because that's really the, the, the key area where we think um, we can you know, make a difference in the ecosystem. Again, back to the NCRIS uh, roots of the ARDC, we are one of the NCRIS facilities and this is uh, was a slide from the 
the review of the research infrastructure that was done by the chief scientists in 2016. You see on the right here, we've got national infrastructure. It needs to support research institutions and world-class universities and industry. Um, but that's not all. It's not just infrastructure for infrastructure's sake. Uh, off to the right here, you see that we really are, as, a pro as the NCRIS program is committed to real impacts to society um, and long, you know, broader impacts than just and just research uh, and you'll see a little bit later on how we've um, integrated that formally into this program. So I think that was all on the uh, the background there. I'll hand over now to Catherine where we talk a little bit around more around the actual uh, shape of uh, the program that we're proposing. Thanks Adrian. Okay, this program, it's part of um, a larger initiative that we're calling the National Data Assets Initiative uh, within ARDC. There are six programs in this initiative and they've targeted uh, different partners and different beneficiaries. So uh, already underway, we've had open calls for the public sector, um, NCRIS and um, the start of our health studies program. Um, there, there's this one, the Australian Data Partnerships, and to come, uh, emerging collections and institutional underpinnings. Um, so that's just to give an introduction to um, the National Data Assets Initiative and this program sitting as uh, one of six programs within that. Next slide, Adrian. Um, and you'll see that this. Uh, some of those other programs were targeted to particular um, beneficiaries or um, audiences. This one is the most open of the programs. Um, there are no particular eligibility requirements around who can apply. Um, we're looking for national level data assets, um, both uh, pre preferably both in coverage and access. And as Adrian mentioned, the partnerships in the program is important. We're looking for multi-organisational initiatives. So, part, you know, strong partnerships, uh, national partnerships to deliver those national level data assets. Um, we're talking about this program as our flagship program as being our largest um, and most open program of the six. So at a glance, um, we're looking to support development of national scale data assets um, for leading edge research. As Adrian said, we're recognising that the benefits from such um, national scale data assets can't be realised without some sort of Commonwealth investment and that the scale of such infrastructure and its collaborations won't emerge naturally um, from individual research organisation investments and activities. So. ARDC is taking a role here. And we're to do that, we're investing up to $500,000 per project with projects expected to commence next year uh, in January. The call for expressions of interest is already open on our website and it'll be closing at the end of next week, which is the 31st of July. For those applications that are successful at our expression of interest stage, they will be invited to submit a request for proposal and that request for proposal will open on the 1st of September and close again on the 18th of September. Um, and there will be an evaluation period after that. And the next slide. Um, what we're looking for in these projects is a number of key characteristics. And that is that there, um, these projects are establishing a new national data asset, or they might be enhancing an existing data asset, asset but uh, such that it has made uh, a national data asset. We're looking, uh, as I said, the eligibility is very open, but we're just looking that um, the lead, uh, project lead is uh, from an Australian organisation, um, but uh, the project collaborators could be international. Um, we're definitely uh, looking for the active project participants to form a national partnership, and that's a very important part of this program. And we're looking for the data asset that results from these projects to be national in scale. And what we mean um, by that 
national in scale is that the data is contributed by multiple organisations, um, that there are multiple beneficiaries and they cover many organisations or and or that the governance arrangements um, include uh, multiple organisations actually, so all of those things. So uh, the next slide, um, what sort of things are, are covered in this program for these projects? What sort of activities are we looking at? So there's quite a bit of detail there, but briefly, um, there'll be activities around identifying and documenting research purpose and, and the target research community for the collection. Um, looking at improvements to data quality, data standards, the coverage, the discoverability, usability and access arrangements around that data. Uh, there might be activities around consensus building for adoption and implementation of um, those improvements or um, that uh, above around quality and coverage, etc. Um, they might be activities that look at developing um, data deposit and capture workflows or processing and curation pipelines or even the interfaces and tools um, tools and platforms that support that data and part of those activities uh, would also that would also be in scope would be formalizing uh, policy statements governance arrangements and the operations and business models around the national data asset and uh, for co-investment, which is our next slide. Um, previously, we've, uh, for our so ARD supported investments, we've asked for a matching co-investment um, of, of dollars from our in, uh, investing partners. But for this program and in light of the issues that are faced by institutions uh, with the COVID pandemic, uh, the one-to-one -one threshold for co-investment has been um, waived and will not apply for this program. So you won't be required um, to, for, uh, to have a one-to-one -one co-investment in order to apply. However, the amount of co-investment that you're proposing in your application will form part of the assessment um, that we make during the evaluation process. So it is still um, an important part of the overall program and its assessment. Okay, and looking um, to a project overview. So this slide, we've, we're trying to show how um, usually you typically conceive of a, uh, I guess, a project pipeline or workflow. Um, so at, at number one in the blue, you'd have some project inputs. Um, so more specifically in the, this case, you'd have some AIDC resources and support that we've talked about as part of this program. And to match that, and as well as, you'd also have resources and support from other research organisations and facilities or research communities and other beneficiary groups. Those feed in to um, the project activities. And the project activities um, uh, for this program would be looking at things around, uh, so the previous slide, the sort of activities we talked about that were in scope, those changes to the data quality, those improvements in standards, improvements in access arrangements, uh, implementing those governance and policy and workflow arrangements would all be part of the project activities. And those act project activities lead to project outputs. So uh, that's what we're aiming for in this program is a national data asset. Um, and that data asset um, will be for research, for data integration into workflows and um, tools and platforms, integration of that data into tools and platforms and those workflows. So the output, improved national data asset for research. Having a look at the next page, so beyond the project outputs, um, it's really important, we're thinking uh, for this program that we have a focus on the longer term project outcomes and the impacts for those projects. So uh, we're placing quite a bit of importance on the post project phase um, that we're calling it. So those project outputs from the last slide that um, national improved national data asset that's available for research and the integration of that data into workflows and platforms um, will have outcomes um, also as time goes on 
and we're hoping that those outcomes would be something like the increased use of that data in research as that's an aim of this program. And then those outcomes lead to those longer term impacts, those things that might be a little bit more difficult um, to see and measure, but we're looking to make changes there and see things uh, like research efficiency or um, environmental, social and economic consequences from the investments that we and you make uh, in this program leading to increased use of national data assets in research and these ultimate impacts uh, in the wider research space and in society as a whole. So that's a little bit of an overview of how we see uh, our investment and um, the projects sort of flowing and working and Adrian's going to pick up uh, with those outcomes and impacts. Adrian. Sure, uh, just taking up on what Catherine was saying there about the, the really emphasis that we're placing on these outcomes and impacts of the projects. Um, and so we've integrated it throughout the whole program here in the planning stage. Um, exactly how the data will be used in research is part of the selection criteria as are the intended you know, broader impacts. Um, we're encouraging research users and end beneficiary and translation partners to be all part of the, the, the program. And uh, we'll be asking you know, questions about who's on the, we're encouraging them through the criteria and through the questions to have those kind of um, end user beneficiaries involved right from the beginning uh, so that they can be uh, part of the planning for the project and part of the planning of the infrastructure. And we will be asking for an explicit plan as part of the project plan, the normal project plan that you do for uh, any kind of a, a, a project, we will be asking for an explicit section around how you're planning for the asset to be used in research and then how that research intends to um, connect to you know, broader societal impact. So that's all in that first side there, the, the planning side of it. Uh, we will expect that, that as part of the implementation of the actual project itself, that you uh, implement the things that were in the plan and that you really have a program around community awareness about um, how the, uh, the, to get the research community buy into the, the use of the, the data infrastructure, uh, that you're putting in systems to track that usage. And there's an important part here, we take this so seriously that there is an extra 5% available if you are making changes that will allow you to track the usage of the infrastructure after the project. Um, and then on to the last um, section there, the, where there's a reporting phase, uh, and that's a the formal reporting for these projects continues to the 12 and 24 month uh, stage after the project, in which case we'll be contacting you for information about the use of this, you know, any metrics you have around the the use of the, the infrastructure in research and uh, a little bit, you know, in the broader sense, any narratives or story about how um, it's connecting into um, the broader societal benefit. These are things that, that we inherit from the NCRIS um, program. Uh, we know that all research organisations in Australia are also uh, inheriting these same imperatives because they're not just things that we're making up, they're part of research system policy in Australia, uh, that we have excellent research, that the, that the research infrastructure supports that excellent research, and that the whole research system is contributing to the uh, benefits for the society. So these are not, you know, uh, we're hoping that uh, you will have them as uh, shared priorities as well. Um, so that's on the research outcomes and broader societal impacts. Uh, another thing that we take very seriously is the idea of FAIR. Um, it's part of the NCRIS program principles and policy that, and I'll read it here, that data generated, created and captured or stored by NCRIS funded projects will be made available to the wider research community based on the FAIR principles. and. Uh, 
you'll get these slides afterwards. There's a link there to uh, a guideline that we have for uh, projects that we're co-investing in, uh, and that will give you some very clear guidelines on what you know what a, um, at least a, a basic level of fairness is for the data outputs from these projects. I think that was all on that. Um, I think we might be able to pause there. Uh, you can go onto our website if you have any further questions. There's a little question form there on the, the program um, page there. I think we're ready to pause for questions. I, th I think we mentioned at the beginning that uh, questions, you type them into the question box. Uh, Catherine, do we have anything? We have a few questions and please um, keep popping them in there and I'll keep checking. Um, we have um, one question about uh, the difference between, the main differences between the platforms and the data partnerships program. Mm -hmm. And we have another question about the proposed institutional underpinnings call and what that one will be about. Good, well, funny you should ask that question, but uh, I've got a couple of slides here, so I might as well just go straight on to those. Um, assuming that people would want to know, not necessarily just about the Australian Data Partnerships Program, but its relationship with other parts of the of stuff that we, uh, other programs we have. Um, one of the ways of looking at infrastructure for data is that you can build data generating data infrastructure you can uh, build data that's uh, infrastructure that's for organizing data or uh, using data and obviously they're linked and related etc but the focus quite often in infrastructure terms um, we're focusing on these particular functions uh, as far as the ARDC programs are concerned. If you're thinking about a, a platform or a, you know, a, a software and an environment uh, that will uh, that's really focusing on helping people to use data, then that's probably to do with our platforms program, which we'll talk about. If you're talking about oh my things are gone out of whack there. If it's about generating data, then ARDC does not have any programs in the generation of data uh, stage. That's a, a different area of in infrastructure that we're not um, we're not involved in. Uh, and if it's about organising data, then we have our national data assets program. So just to um, between that, so the question we specifically had is, you know, what, what about the, where do we sit between platforms and national data assets? Um, the national data assets programs, and there are a number of them, but they all uh, are to do with improvements to the data itself. The actual data asset is the output of a national data assets um, project. Uh, the improvements are broad. We have a very holistic view of the, of the world. Um, it's quality and standards, you know, process, fairness, the coverage of the whole, the, the whole asset itself is in scope, as is governance and access arrangements and, and policy, etc. Um, because we're focusing in on the, on the content in the, <coughs> in the National Data Assets Program, it is in scope to build the interface to tools and, and, and platforms you know, within these projects. On the other side there, we have another call out for platforms. It's, um, and the platforms is more about you know, a platform or a virtual environment or a, um, that allows researchers to do something, to use or analyze or visualize, manipulate, collaborate, access, uh, there's a whole set of stuff there, but that's what uh, a platform project about. And the platform project is really about the development of that um, software um, platform, adopting and adapting uh, platforms there. And of course, the last one there, the connections back to the data are in, are in scope there. So there is a little bit of overlap between the two programs. There are some activities that would be in scope for both. But if the core of your activity is in one or the other, then I strongly recommend that you uh, tailor uh, a specific um, 
proposal you know, that is appropriate to those programs. Uh, we're running them both at the same time so that if you're very worried about being able to do both, you, could, you, you can um, run um, proposals in each program, but remember they are complementary programs. So that if you're putting the same words into both, then I can be assured that you'll at least fail in one of them and possibly in both because they, they actually have um, complementary uh, outputs and ambitions. So that's between platforms and national data assets. We have a second question about um, some emerging of the other, collections. Yes, that's yeah. the emerging collections and partnerships. So I grayed out the public sector and NCRIS because those expression of interests are already out. We wanted to have some programs that were specifically allocated to some priority areas that, that we had. Um, the emerging collections is yet to uh, Come. And so you might be wanting to know, well, how does that relate to the Australian Data Partnerships? Um, the best way to look at that is in this idea of resourcing and support on one side. So if we think about a data collection, and this is the, the sort of slippery slide uh, or the, the roller coaster ride of, of developing a, a data asset, what usually happens is you have a founding group that is running with some kind of an idea around a data asset. They have resourcing and some kind of support from their either their institution or their group. As the data asset actually grows in scale and scope, the founding group is actually less and less um, uh, resourced to actually keep it going. Uh, and unfortunately, the, a national consortium may only want to get involved when the across this right hand axis the data asset actually has a national impact a national scope and a national scale so in kind of startup terms they call this little valley here the valley of death in that the original group can't keep resourcing this thing as it grows big but it's not big enough yet for you know to to get the the attention of a national consortium so that little value of death there is really what the emerging collections program is about. We are looking to bridge that gap by either uh, acting on the data asset itself and you know, bringing it up to that uh, scale where the national consortium is obvious or working on the national consortium side of things to say, well, uh, what do we need to bring in place to bring the other partners formally onto the project and, and set up that governance and uh, other policy arrangements. Uh, so that's what Emerging Collections is about. It's really uh, bridging that gap from, if you think about the rainforest, you remember I had the slide at the beginning there, the rainforest metaphor. How do you get through the, you know, so there is a bit of a, uh, a gap there for the trees that are trying to push up through the canopy there. And we have an Emerging Collections program for that. It's much smaller and they're much shorter projects, but it's that sort of catalyst there that would make a big difference to a, an Emerging program. There's uh, meant to be six to 12 month kind of projects with uh, an indicative uh, investment of around $50,000 from the ARDC. And we will be running those programs, uh, a number of those Emerging Collections programs into the future the first one of which is scheduled for quarter four of this year. Um, to contrast that with the, the program we've been talking about today, the Australian Data Partnerships is about something which does have a, at least a convincing or compelling national scale with a set of partners and partnerships and that you're on that ramp up. And remember I said that the role of ARDC was to help with the scaling up or the, the step up or you know, really um, catalyzing a, you know, a new state for a, a, a compelling data um, asset. So that's the, the, they're targeted at slightly different stages of the of uh, development. And that's why we have, I know it's a little bit confusing, we've got a lot of programs, but the, those programs are there for specific strategic purposes so that we have a portfolio of, uh, of activities uh, that, that help a number of different stakeholders and, uh, and types of data collections. We did have a question about, um, I'll just go back about this program, the institutional underpinnings. 
Oh, sorry. Uh, the institution underpinnings is is aimed at the institution as an institution. So the central areas of the institution stepping up, you know, the research offices and IT and uh, library and e-research uh, as an institution stepping up to say, yes, as an institution, we have the um, um, infrastructure, the policies, uh, the support, um, the frameworks for managing, you know, uh, for, yes, for managing data. We have the capability for data and it's these institutional underpinnings which will be a great benefit for us in all these other programs. But that's uh, the, the institutional underpinnings program is really focused you know, back at the institutions in, in setting up a, a national framework uh, for this uh, institutional capability in uh, data management. And that also is uh, um, targeted for um, expression of interest uh, towards the end of the year. Any other questions, uh, Catherine? We've got quite a few questions, a couple more on platforms, but I think um, you've covered those. So we might just move on to, um, there were quite a few questions around funding. Um, there was what can be included in the budget, uh, salaries, travel, uh, workshops. Also, can we spend the money on data collection? or processing samples that have been collected by other uh, organisations. And yeah, there, yeah. there I might start going backwards into those and you can remind me of the ones that I okay. haven't had. Uh, data collection, as we said, uh, this our program is not really about data generation. Um, the only edge cases there is when quite often what you're doing in a national data asset is defining a new set of standards that, that represent the new national data asset. And those standards quite often need to be pushed back into the data collection pipeline. Um, we certainly wouldn't be funding you know, data collection as part of our uh, contribution to these projects, but uh, the integration, I suppose, and, and the socialization and the uh, uh, adopting of those new data standards and principles into the um, uh, into the data generation pipeline uh, could be a small part of the project. Other questions there, Catherine? I've forgotten about all the, the other shopping list of stuff there in scope. Oh, that was travel and travel. workshops. And look, uh, the output here is a national data asset and with national consensus, so, so long as the activities that you're proposing are uh, to that end, then that's okay if you need to have a workshop. Uh, again, it's proportion. Um, the, if, it's, if, it, if you're doing data consensus and data development and data standards development, we understand that you do need to do, there needs to be a lot of communication around that and any activities that, are, that contribute to that uh, can be in scope. Uh, Travelling just to do research or to attend a research conference uh, is out of scope. These are infrastructure programs. I think that was everything, um, Adrian. There's a couple of questions about co-investment. What's considered co-investment? So is that staff time, existing infrastructure, salaries, uh, again, travel? Um, uh, what if we have a grant that's already investing in a data asset? Can we include that funding? Can we list past investments in the data asset? The key thing about the scope, and let me see because I've got this up on the screen, I can control all of that if I go back. But the key thing about what you can uh, co invest in is here. Uh, co investment is in the activities of the project. So anything that's an in uh, scope activity there that is going to be mentioned in your work packages, uh, any contribution to that is uh, in scope for um, co-investment. The inputs are not co-investment. Uh, so if you've got 
some existing data and you've been collecting that for 20 years. We are very grateful for that uh, for that activity and support it. However, you can't say, look, we've got $100 million worth of work that's already happened in this project. What we're saying to you, okay, what is going to happen in this project uh, and what activity, who is going to uh, invest in those activities? Uh, I think there are another, uh, just to remind me of any of the other questions around that. I think there were, yes, I'm with you. I think you've covered everything there. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm looking ahead to the next questions. Um, there was a question about uh, what resources are available through ARDC for storage of large volumes of data in perpetuity? All right, these projects are for catalyzing, developing, doing something different, changing the quality of your data, remember we said, uh, improvements to data. Um, we also have programs around uh, storage um, and those programs like this are being rolled out in a, in a gradual uh, way. So yes, uh, we do have uh, programs in that area the activities that we're asking about in this project are about you know what is, what is required to build the content of that collection what is required to change the the quality of it so we hope to be able to bring together a whole set of things remember in our, my very first slide you know we say we do skills and, and people and culture and policy we hope to be able to contribute to your um, projects in a number of ways um, including uh, long-term storage um, we will be looking to you uh, uh, as well to you know tell us what you think the operational footing of the program would look like after the end of the project and um, the uh, ARDC is part of the long-term national research infrastructure and we will we will continue our program of uh, um, in those in all those areas of culture and policy and uh, software platforms and underpinning storage and compute infrastructure. Okay, there are a couple of questions about international partners. So the first one was, can overseas organisations be involved and provide data? Uh, can we have international partners? And is integration of national data assets with international comparative collections within scope here? That's a very good question and not one that I was particularly prepared for. Um, in general, the linkages with international are a sign of extremely high value. Uh, and so we would consider them to be um, uh, highly desirable uh, components of a project. The way we've set it up again is that these are for improvements to a national data asset. Um, and connections to uh, international uh, will certainly give our Australian researchers uh, 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 an advantage. Um, everyone wants to be able to um, take part in global research. Um, I think uh, obviously the, the, the nub of the activities of the project is to make the changes to our national uh, assets here to make them integratable uh, or uh, to enable collaborations with those international partners. So yes, I can't see why any of that activity would be out of scope. The obvious thing that you need to, uh, the output of it is that we actually do have a national data asset. Um, so uh, aligning with international best practice is probably one of the best ways to make sure that you're getting the best standards uh, so a number of the things which are in scope, you know, changes to data quality and standards, even on this slide here. Um, usually the best way to do that in a research world is to align with international standards. So we would consider all those um, activities as well and truly in scope. With the proviso that the output, as you see here, is, a, is the Australian component of that uh, international collaboration.
Uh, we have another question around um, eligibility and organisations. Just clarifying, when we say multiple organisations, do we mean individuals from multiple organisations or organisations as a whole? So I think we use that in, in uh, relationship to uh, governance from uh, multiple organisations now. Um, having people from multiple organisations is a sign of national buy-in. Um, so I think that's a very good thing. In some cases, as far as the ongoing operations of something, you also want the organisation as a whole to be involved. So I think both of those things, both, you know, both individuals and um, research organisations would have um, would be part of a, a really strong uh, partnership uh, and play different roles in the in the project. Okay, um, there was a question about uh, is partnerships this program uh, Australian data partnerships the same as national data assets. Um, there's a bit of overlap in the language, but just to clarify the National Data Assets Initiative is the overarching initiative that sits over the six programs of which the Australian Data Partnerships is one. Australian Data Partnerships is developing national data assets. Um, there is a nice uh, bit of documentation on our website which um, does step out each of the programs um, and when the open calls will be and how they fit within the National Data Assets Initiative. There was another question about uh, emerging collections and information on that. Now you, you can find that uh, on our website, um, uh, some brief information on the AIDC website um, as well. With more information uh, uh, due within the next month, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to take the opportunity to Pull my blind down as you ask the question. Yes, let me look for the next one. Okay, we had a couple of questions, I'll try this, um, about the process. So uh, I was just saying, Adrian, we have a couple of questions about the process. Uh, one is about, um, oh, I've lost it now, uh, was about the filtering at the EOI stage, what will happen there? I'm happy uh, will to there be filtering? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I'll find Ready? the other one that I just lost. Sure. <laughs> uh, usually the EOI stage, um, we did say that, that some would be invited to go over to request for proposal. Usually the EOI stage, the only thing that we would be filtering on is uh, on the eligibility uh, components of the program, meaning um, are there Australian research organisations involved in a partnership? Are, they, you know, are you developing a you know, national data asset? If someone were to come into this which is saying, you know, I'm doing uh, a training program and we love training programs, we would say, well, okay, you're an individual, this is a training program, it doesn't really fit the criteria for this program. We, you know, um, so those are the kind of things we wouldn't take forward into the request for proposal. You, at that EOI stage, we're not judging whether we think it's a strong proposal or a weak proposal, or et cetera. It's just whether it fits the uh, eligibility criteria of the program. We may, during the EOI pro, uh, stage, suggest um, that people, uh, that there are similar ideas. So that's part of the idea of the expression of interest stage is to um, sort of surface ideas that are working in the same area that might be able to combine or at least realise that they're, you know, how they might be complementing each other. And there was a question about, will we have a specific assessment criteria uh, and will there be a template the assessor will use? Uh, that was probably in relation to the request for proposal stage. Yes, so the express, expressions of interest will not be, so the final request for proposal, yes, is taken to uh, an external uh, a selection panel that has people on it uh, external to the ARDC as well as ARDC people and they do have explicit criteria and a rubric for 
um, assessment. Um, that's at the request for proposal stage. Remember I said we don't really uh, assess the expressions of interest at the first stage. Uh, we just check over them to see whether they fit the scope of the program. And there's some uh, questions where people um, have yet to clarify a few things and want to know if they can put in an EOI anyway. So if they still need to um, confirm co-funding um, from other partners and um, or they're firming up other collaborators, partners pending official pr approval, but they'll have it sorted by the RFP stage, would, would we still recommend they go ahead and put in an EOI? Yes, on both those counts, I would strongly recommend you put in the expression of interest, even if it's not complete, uh, especially for things like the you know, co-investment or a number of partners. Um, those are things that, that uh, would be only assessed at the request for proposal stage. Unless we get something that just has a single name on it with no relationship to anything else, then we might start to say, Perhaps this one's not going to make it on, uh, won't be eligible because of the national criteria. Um, a specific question around disease or condition specific registries with national participation, uh, which includes community representation, are they suitable for the data partnerships program? I think so, yes. This uh, this program here is as open as it can possibly get, uh, and that sounds like it's. Uh, a disease registry usually has data coming in from all over the place. It has data being used from all over the place. It usually has some kind of an, uh, a governance and access arrangements that are um, also taken care of by multiple institutions. So, yep, sounds like a national data asset in our terms. Um, can a lead organisation in this program uh, be a company or do they need to be a research institute? Uh, the, they need to have an ABN is our, is our hurdle there, which is not a, a high one. Um, we're not in this program uh, saying that it has to be a specific kind of organisation. Um, who plays that lead role. Uh, we would obviously, uh, as part of the partnership, the Australian Data Partnership, we would be looking for prominent research organisations that, that show the, the, the broad participation of the research community, the buy-in from the research community, the requirements of the research community. But um, it's possible that you know a specific company may be able to be just the, the brokerage that would bring all that together and if that's the case um, that's why we haven't been specific about necessarily um, making you ineligible just because you're not a research organization in the past for example we've had um, uh, an academy of science you know come forward to be the the broker and it's not a research organization but they were a good uh, broker for one of these national partnerships so I could see that other types of company might be able to come forward in that sense. Great. Um, we have a question about the allocation of funding. Um, does it go to the, I guess, the lead, um, receive the 100% of the ARDC investment, or is it divided up between the partners? Uh, we have one contract with one organisation, uh, a lead organisation, and it's up to them to um, okay. subcontracts or um, allocate the resources wherever they're needed for the resource packages. Um, we don't require that necessarily that uh, the work is being done in several places. Uh, although, uh, having work packages done by a number of different organisations um, does, can be a, a, a symptom of a larger community buy-in. So, although it's not required, um, that's one of the ways of, of um, enabling that. But no matter what it is, uh, if you're going to spend it all in one place or 
in five, uh, ARDC only has one contract with the host organization and they um, deal with any dispersal of funds within that. Okay, there's a few questions about um, what's required at the EOI stage. And I just given time here, I'd suggest um, you have a look on our website at the form, which you can view. Um, you can view in, in an alternative format as well, and you'll see what's required to submit an expression of interest. Um, and exactly there, um, someone's asked about examples of what has been funded previously. Uh, this is the first time we've run this exact program. Um, the ARDC has made investments in other types of programs previously, and they um, there are some information about those programs on our website under projects. They were our discovery projects. Now that they are um, not the same as this program, but um, if you want to have a look at some of the projects that have been invested in by ARDC in the past, that information is available on our website. Um, just lost another question. I think we've had quite a few questions and we're just getting to time now. Um, a, a few of them are quite detailed or specific to your circumstances. Um, we might uh, start to wrap it now, but we will update the questions in the FAQ on our website. Uh, and we will uh, have a record of these questions and um, provide you an answer either in the FAQ or get back to you directly. Uh, if you feel that um, you have something more specifically or your question hasn't been answered, please get in touch with us via our website where you can ask a question um, about this program. If you have questions about the platforms program, there's also um, a similar avenue to ask a question on the platforms page of our website, and that will be directed to the program managers for that program. Um, is there anything else you want to say? Adrian finishing up? No. Uh, how DC looks forward to um, you know, working with uh, the community on these really valuable partnerships. And we've talked about partnerships throughout the whole um, hour today. Uh, it's part of our strategy to do with data in that um, data is not a transaction that you just, uh, it's something that has uh, time and depth and a, a, it has a history of how it was produced with a research community or um, through a government process and it has history into the future about you know, how we will build longitudinal data sets etc so we think that the best way for us to capture the value of data is through partnerships with long-lived research organizations and government organizations uh, and that that's uh, through the application of ARDC resources and um, letting the data reside with the different um, research organizations or government agencies, businesses, uh, that that's the, the best way to build a data infrastructure is through these partnerships where components from the national research infrastructure, components from research organizations uh, and other players that they that uh, there's that's the reason why we've had such a focus on partnerships here is that that's because that's the kind of infrastructure that's required um, for data so we couldn't do it we can't possibly do it without you so we're really looking forward to um, uh, being able to partner with a number of players in this area Thanks Adrian and thanks so much everyone for your attendance today and all the fantastic questions. As I said, we'll be updating the FAQ on our website in the next uh, couple of days. And um, please, if you uh, feel you have a question that hasn't been answered, uh, get in touch with us via the Ask a Question form on our website. And we're looking forward to receiving all those uh, expressions of interest. Okay, that's all today. Thank you. Bye for now.